remember when Argy Plain did this. Gently, gracefully, we climb to 5,000 feet in the blimp. The captain opens the door and chucks out our zaggy flying wing. Then the test deep stall landings over an airfield that if you know what this clip is from, you know jolly well where we are. Deep stall landings have been around for years. They were the preserve of free flighters to dethermalize. Then the military sort of made them popular again with the Raven and Puma with their environment, a re-kitting aircraft there. And in the RG pilot world, RG plane world, there are also commercial entities using it. And in fact, these people, Swift radio planes, they're basically the lead for this method of landing. This is their Lynx M. And it's got a three hour, capable of three hour flight times. And the landing, whilst firm, and your aircraft needs to be able to survive it, the wing coming off to give it, uh, to, to get rid of that energy, um, it's, it's a great mode. Um, we heard all about it on Tom Pittinger's um, talk about landings. I'll put that at the Archipide Unconference. I'll put that in the comments below. Here's another one also using uh, RG plane or RG pilot, it's a Cumulus 1, there he is, so here we are, on our way down from 5,000 feet, and we've got to have an aiming point, so why not use something from that, that video, the James May Toy Stories Flight Club video, and what we're going to use as the aiming point in today's exercise is... Another big concern is whether the crate will start spinning uncontrollably. If it does, it'll be impossible to stop, and the glider might be destroyed even if the release system works. So, to be on the safe side, we nick the airfield's windsock to act as a stabiliser. So, there we are, that windsock there. That's the target for this exercise. So, this first landing, I believe, I think I'm right in saying it was an eight knot southerly wind. Uh, so, there's its one orbit at 20 feet. And then once it's done its complete orbit, works out its wind. It breaks out, again, completely automated this landing sequence. You've done nothing, you've just dropped one waypoint, and boom. So let's try it again. Let's turn the wind up. So here we are, so you turn the wind up in X-Plane. If only you could do that in real life, then we need to get ourselves back into that blimp and just drop ourselves from on high. When it's released, it can go all sorts of unusual attitudes, and it'd be quite amusing seeing what it tries to do itself to get itself the right way up. So you can see already it's different. I think, what speed was this? This was just, just about 20 knots, I think, now. I can't quite remember. So you see, down at Whistles. Still making its way down to 20 feet. At this time, a bit of a skinning turn. Wing's not the best, really. If you had a rudder, I guess life would be a lot, lot better. Of course, that Lynx M doesn't have ailerons. There we go, round the corner. You see a very, very, unfortunately my computer isn't up to running this. I need a bigger, better computer. So there's that first turn out. There's the windsor, boom. All right, let's really give it. Now I, I thought obviously, you know, for the sake of science, you really got to give it a go. This is 28 knots. So this is a 28 knot wind. Well, look, see already it's being blown, and that was from the uh, from the west, basically. It's making no distance over the ground now. Look, so really a, a vertical descent into this. Is the across not fast enough? And I thought it would would just give up at the bottom of the hill and plonk itself down there somewhere. But little did I know, the brave and plucky RG plane flown zaggy wing pushes forward and does its best to get home. So I did wonder how it was going to make a complete 360 now. So we are obviously life's about to get easier for it. Hmm. That's the 360 ended, I think, wasn't it? I was very surprised to do this. 